and welcome to the Gamer Table. It is Monday, and we're reviewing Lord of the Water Deep. Very cool looking box. It's a Euro style game, and you know how I feel about most Euro style games. Dungeons and Dragons Euro, where the theme doesn't matter, but it looks pretty. Well, the theme, the theme matches the game. I mean, any work of placement game, any theme could be post pasted onto it, but you know. The theme does make sense for this game. You gather the adventures to the tavern, you send a boat on quests. You get lots of options on the board, uh, lots of quests, a good variety all around. You're Lord of Waterdeep, one of the secret rulers of this great city. Through your agents, you recruit adventurers to complete quests and advance your agendas. The Lords of Waterdeep all have the safety of the city at heart, but each one is also laying his or her own plans. Through backdoor dealings, mercenaries, and plain old bribery, can you guide the city to become the greatest Lord of Waterdeep? Again, the theme really, really doesn't matter. But it's a good theme, I will not deny that, but yeah. I find in this game you really, you are not even read the flavor text because it just doesn't matter to what you're doing. The theme, eh, doesn't really matter. I mean, the theme as it is holds together. You read all the flavor text, it's very interesting. But it doesn't matter to the gameplay itself. It's like, yeah, whatever. And you're not really reading that. Okay, I build a building, it gets me two more orange guys. I build, I go to there and it gets me a black guy. And that gets me two white guys. That gives me a purple guy. I mean, I know they're, they're wizards and clerics and rogues and fighters, but they're purple guys and orange guys. They're carrot cubes and they're, they're beet cubes or whatever. It's the Great Burger War of 1865. You know, it could be any theme. But the gameplay is tight. It's fast, it doesn't slow down until somebody starts thinking about where to place their worker and it's like, dude, it's the same seven places that it's been all game. What's the puzzle? You get a bunch of little dudes all in this amazing box that fits everything. The insert is very nice. I can't say enough about the insert. I think it's just brilliant. I think it was engineered very well. How you could just push down on the side of the cards to get them out as opposed to, you know, and in some inserts where they got card holes, they just kind of like have enough grab on either side, they leave a little spot for you to pry your fingers in. You get so many of your little workers to start the game, and at round five you'll get one more, and you take turns putting workers in the little spaces, placing workers in a worker placement game! Uh, but agents, agents, yes. But very yeah, it's agents. essentially... Same. Yeah. Right. It's got similarities to Kalis because there's a builder spot where you can build buildings which allow to more spaces for you to place your agents. With workers. Yeah. Or Bonuses or... for the person who owns it. Schmendrick. Yeah. Yes. There are options generally than the uh, options that are on the center of the board. The, the buildings you can buy uh, really add to uh, locations and their improvements on the yeah, regular locations on the board. You get more stuff out of them. You might end up helping an opponent a little bit, but you gotta pick and choose what you need and what you want. You're willing to give to the other players. A few ways to gain victory points. You can gain victory points by building cards, but the, That's one for the main theater. way to get victory points is by completing quests. As uh, we mentioned in the overview thing, there are the eleven Lords of Waterdeep cards. You get one of these secretly, and it has a special. Win condition extra victory points just for you. For this one, for you know, Dern and the Wanderer, at the end of the game, you score four victory points for each commerce quest and each warfare quest you complete, extra on top of what you already scored. And all but one of the lords are a combination of two different quest types. Well, we played this a number of times now, and I've enjoyed it every time. It's uh, probably one of my favorite uh, worker placement games. I know it's. Uh, the theme doesn't really matter, but it certainly looks good. Everything on the, the artwork and everything in this game is uh, nice, high quality. And then, you know, the, the board itself is very nice. Uh, the tokens are all, you, know, you know, nice, solid wood pieces and everything. And the card, card stocks, very good. Nice artwork on everything. The amount of buildings and the amount of quest cards mean that uh, not, a, not any game will play exactly the same. You can't have a worker placement without the cubes. cubes. Lots of cubes. They're not cubes. They're wizards. And fighters. And rogues. And 
Clarence. 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 Okay, Clarence. He didn't play like that. He's a dude. The money tokens are odd. Square. Ace things. With a little hole. And, and a little crescent moons. moon. Little hole. Um, it has a bit of a Moorish feel to the money, so that's probably where this type of this uh, particular D and D stuff would set in sort of like an Eastern sort of old time Iran Iraq that area of the world type map. They even got a little marker when you pass uh, the all way around the board, let you know you passed and going all the way around. A little one hundred, which I don't get a lot of use out of. But to comment on the board again, each one of these. You can push down on the side, and it pops up. Same with the cards. Push down, and they all pop up. Easy to get out. Yep. Not, not somebody having just dig your fingers. Yeah, somebody like, yeah, I, was doing it. I was like, okay, they got the finger holes in this one. They didn't have it on that one, but I was trying to get on the side, and I didn't realize it. Yeah. So, but this yeah. one, if you put all the buildings in there, and then the lords on top, yeah. you can pop the lords out and then grab the building. Yeah. yeah. Very nicely designed boxes. Excellent. All the buildings, as we said, you can build them. You have little indicators that tuck into the corner of the building, to show that you're the one that owns that building. So, when you create this building out there, there's the thing that happens there, but also there's a bottom for the owner of the building. So whenever you activate the building, the owner gets something too. So, you're sort of helping guys when you don't want to. So these might be better than the ones in the middle, but if you take the ones in the middle, you're not giving anybody else any stuff. But there's, exactly. But there's nothing stopped from the owner themselves going to the building in the building advantage plus the owner advantage on top of that. Yeah, which is very, very handy. So, I mean, either way, the owner, yeah. the owner just gets some huge benefits. You gotta be careful, too, when you're collecting uh, cubes and things like that. If you if there are quests in the top of the board that uh, you can go to and grab, uh, you gotta be careful. If you're building up particular colors for those quests, you better get that quest before someone else grabs it or swaps all the quests out, too. Uh, you, or if you grab a quest and people see what you need to go for, they can just land on all those spots uh, for the particular colors of cubes you need. You gotta be careful. There are three types of quests. There are the quests that come from playing the intrigue cards, which are called mandatory quests. And when you get one of those, you must complete it before any other quests, which really messes you up sometimes, Christopher! Oh, you did it to Chris. He, the, no, Steve did it to Chris Steve over did. and over again. Oh, yeah, oh that was a good one. Uh, and there are other type of quests are the regular ones. Memory. And there are quests that are in black letters, which are your normals. And there are quests in white letters, which are the storyline quests. These ones, when you complete them, stay out. And they, they all give you a give power. You a power. So uh, this one, um, add a lieutenant to your pool for the rest of the game, which is an extra worker for you. We've only seen that Very twice late in the game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the little boards everybody gets are they get the, your symbol, your color, which uh, usually goes by the background here. But that's well, well frustrated. Uh, yeah. Go by your symbol over here. Anyway, you got your agent pool up here. Those are workers you can use. And you've got your active quests over here that you're working on to complete. And you put your completed quests over here, the ones that you will get. The white ones. The extra bonuses every time you do something uh, on them. And then you got uh, your completed quest pile. And you stick your, your particular agent under here that they grant you the your lord. That, yeah. the lord at the end of the game. Yes, lord, your lord of water. Wrapping up for Lords of Waterdeep. I like it a lot. I'm going to give it a nine. I think his theme basically doesn't matter, but it, the theme, the theme is there and it looks works. good. But hard to put anything to it, but it looks great for this game, in particular. Uh, the artwork, and everything is fantastic. Uh, the components are nice and solid, and, uh, well done. Uh, the options are many. There's good variety in the game, and like I said, I'd, I'd have to say this is one of my uh, favorite worker placements out there. I enjoy it quite a bit. I give Lords of Waterdeep a nine. This theme doesn't matter. Waiters. What? Onions, pickles, lettuce, ketchup. <laughs> burger the Great Burger, Great Burger War of 1865 theme could go right on top of this. We could make it a, a wasabi theme game and Chris would never win. Yes. <laughs> yes, because it's pickles and ingredients and you have, instead of completing quests, you're pickles completing and wasabi. And you're com <laughs> well, That's why Chris can't win the pickles. <laughs> Anyway, then, yeah, then you're just completing uh, menu uh, yeah. ingredients and stuff like that. And that's Chris. So the yeah, the theme. Yeah. Well, Chris is right. The theme is solid amongst all its parts, and it holds together. If you read all the flavor text, it yeah. does give you a good story. 
But you know, it doesn't matter no for the game. game. Yeah. 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 I like I like theme, and I even find I'm just ignoring the theme and just frantically trying to put work to get him in the spot. Yeah, you just stuff. want to get the stuff you really need. Easy to play and teach. Oh yeah, really easy to teach and fun. This yeah, this game is a lot of fun. There's just enough player interaction, and it's not too evil. Right. So should be you more evil. Do it and stuff, but you can't. <laughs> so. I guess I would give this, and the components fitting in the box awesomely, and a box that's not like every other box. I give Lords of Waterdeep a 9. The variety just in the game itself, and you know there's going to be expansions, there's always going to be expansions. I don't but think really need one, but... one of the biggest standout for me is, yeah, the quality of the insert. Like, all board gamers who have lots of board games know some of the inserts you just take out of the box, chuck it, and just put it put everything back into the box, but this insert is a keeper, for sure. You know, everything fits in there perfectly, and which is, is a, something Which is a bonus, really. Something it's, new. It doesn't affect the gameplay, but it certainly helps the organization. Yeah. Yeah, they started sort of doing it with the Castle Raven Lost and Lowe's, somewhat, not really great, but then when they came out with Conquest of Nera, Again, they had places for everything to go, and it all fit in there. And this one, they're really showing you that they're thinking about how to put these pieces in the box, and how to get them back in the box next time so they still fit. Yeah. Overall quality in this game is very high. So that's it for this episode of The Gamer Table. Tune in next week for another game review of another game. City of Splendors. <laughs> we were right. The zipper or muzzle or duct tape, something. I really like the variety in Lords of Waterdeep. I like. I don't. I don't know what to say really bad about it. Really, um, there's really not much bad to say about it. Maybe. No, really, it's just a good work replacement game. The Lords of Waterdeep. It's an all-day gaming event for board games, war games, miniatures, and more. Open gaming for up to 175 people, so there is lots of room, lots of room, lots, lots, lots of room. If you want more information, go to www.kgbcon.com. KGBCon, KGBCon, KGBCon. You can go there and meet maybe somebody from the gamer table. It's a Saturday, I'll go. And it's in May, so I might be working at the market, so I might not be able to go, so I can't You may be working. That is true. Anyways. 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 One small step for man, one 